where are we there? Just on at the, at the duck pond. We're uh, Thursday, December the the end of the month. <laughs> so what is it, ever that is, 29th. Uh, we haven't been out to the duck pond for a while. Oh, perfect timing. Talk about getting lucky, eh? Isn't the duck pond good to us? Okay, okay, I know. There's, there's, there's some. <laughs> Some of the duck pan, pond fans that get a little tired of it, but I don't know. Why aren't we focusing? Let's try that again. Lose all this lovely, lovely footage. Okay, that's a little better. Said about 60x. Every go lucky little girl. Hey, hey, guys, please don't fall. Gonna make the viewers bitch, guys. Let's see reflection, eh? Nature of the chemistry and the lighting. Chemistry, the water, I mean. How long can you hold your breath? Hey, well, keep your eye on the sky. I'll make the chart so it can be uploaded. Uh, we're not going to get a look at the sun right now. Maybe when I tune in again. Um, yeah, the solar storm's ongoing, and of course we're, we're just uh, starting to enter into a big coronal hole wind stream on top of the CMEs. Although the... Uh, Magnetosphere is not <clears throat> at a super saturated level, so we still got a little leeway yet before we turn her on full red and sound the claxtons and unplug from long connectors and, uh, you know, the drill. <sighs> oh, okay, here we are. We'll just go to the... The cows are eating their way to the pond. Quite happy and comfortable by now. By the looks of it, Dave and Red did a lot on the fence this year, so. So, hey, uh, 
What the hell? I got this going anyhow. <sighs> so here's something I want to put out there. Uh, get some feedback. Of course, we're call it a feasibility study, market study, and I'm sure some of you thought about this that have um, detection equipment. Here, we'll hand you over to the dogs. But um, they're having a bone chew. First desert dog. Stuck uh, upon bone chew in a while. So they're quite happy. <sighs> what can we set you? There, guys, you can entertain. carry on with this. The question is, um, would you, thinking about starting up a uh, private radiation assessment service, um, you know, not like a full inspection, but just to kind of give people an indicator on their property and And public places they may want to know about, you know, like maybe that, maybe the community wants to know about the, the playground just down the road or whatever. Uh, obviously something like that has to be self-funding. And it's time that it started to become a, a service. Uh, you know, now it's a very tricky thing to do and that's what I'm trying to work on and I'll show everyone what I come up with. It's the, uh, the liability of it all. You know, so it almost has to be done by people that have enough skill, but not a whole lot of to handle that. You know, to actually say something is or isn't and, and lead a client. To uh, act on that behalf carries its own strict liability, so you know you have to kind of <clears throat> cover your ass really well in how you do something like this. And knowing the great difficulties I've come up with, and so of others from this trillion-dollar industry that wants to explode, especially the mining in Canada, I can see the incentive as to why the uh, <clears throat> secret government would be motivated to shut people like like us up, never mind considering the huge hundred thousands of times more cost of the cleanup even without accidents or incidents. Just dealing with everything running perfectly in the spent fuel after is like hundreds of, it, it's hundreds if not thousands of times more than what the whole investment in nuclear energy has been. Now, and of course, we're talking not stuff blown up by nuclear bombs either here, right? Because that's just kind of like, you know, 10 to the exponent to 10 kind of thing. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, if it was like, a, you know, a, an average backyard of, you know, like... Well, let's be generous, 100 by 200 feet or an acre or something. You know, like, what would you... Uh, you know, would, would you be willing to spend, or people, I mean, ask those other people you know that aren't so aware of the hazards yet. They soon will be because it can't be hidden any longer. It, we all see it coming out at the seams. You know, do you think most people would, you know, invest a hundred bucks? Like, even if, like, 10% of an area is surveyed, over like a whole community or something, a whole municipality or a whole county or whatever, it gives you, you know, spread out randomly, it gives you a pretty good picture of if there's a lot more thorough investigation done and then you can go to the government and force them to do that obligation. Here in Canada, that, that's it. Harper put kibosh on all of it. I can see why uh, probably uh, do undue influence upon his party through lobbyists and whatnot of the, of the energy uh, complex, the energy scarcity complex.
I mean, they've got all these mines going full tilt, like the Tepco mine in uh, Saskatchewan, and uh, wanting to crack open BC spine. You know, like we're all nuked anyhow now, so what the fuck, you know? You got enough to kill you? What's what's uh, what's a little extra, eh? To kill you a little more, eh? <laughs> dead is dead. <clears throat> like a corporate lawyer, eh? Don't worry about the liability. We could tie it up forever with plausible deniability. And if Japan ever gets on its feet, well, we'll just make them pay for our negligence. No, 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 no. If you, you're under an obligation to react and minimize or mitigate any any damage. I mean, read read any, read your homeowner's insurance policy just once, and you'll get a picture. That's tort law at work. Now, Stephen Harper and you supposed corporate lawyers, uh, you know, did, did were, you, were you sleeping or something in that part of Barrister Cult or training or, or, or what? That you, you know as well as I, you can't separate one a, a lower house from a upper house. <laughs> you may in this court, but not in the next court over. You guys are transfixed on your original corporate conquest, and you're losing focus of everything. Rather than mitigating the losses and you know, realizing that your grand illusion is not going to happen, and everyone's going to end up with nothing, including a life. So, what would you pay to have your yard? You know, would you pay a. Uh, an average size house and yard to do a quick um, radiation uh, assessment. Would you, you know, would you pay a hundred bucks to have somebody come down? Because uh, we have to obviously get this. Co you're on your own, fucking done. The government ain't. I mean, what what did they do? They made it so they'd have to do nothing. You know, for all their agendas. Which is far more than just not upsetting the sheeple at election time and having it come out that, oh, 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 you want to crack open this uh, negligent fucking nuclear uh, uranium mining industry all over Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which was a global Zionist government thing. We're putting nukes everywhere. Because it'll ensure taxation when you have to clean up the... Uh, residual toxins with before accidents as I mentioned so you know well, well give me some feedback will you guys um, you know now we're all biased because we're heavy into it and a lot of us don't have equipment and you know there's a lot to know about trying to get an accurate truthful indication and, you know if you don't know that shit well it's just all show and you know you're not accomplishing nothing. We need to find a way to have a good look. And and not just, you know, the horse is out of the stable, but it ain't finished running around yet on this, this thing. We can still save a lot of uh, misery, suffering, and death and, and the catastrophic costs to the, uh, to the medical system, keeping it out of the food chain, you know, where we do find these odd patches here and there that do require mitigation, whether it's you know, the ground being scraped clean or whatever, eh? Or quarantined off from any animals so it doesn't get into the food chain. Or, you know, capped or, or whatever. Well, how do we know? We haven't looked. And the government's not looking. They closed everything down. They offed, you know, a couple of months after closing down the system. And they, they offed all the, most of the people that would be doing that work under government law and obligation to protect and serve us as civil servants. Which is why we pay them money, income tax money, voluntarily, and sales tax, arbitrarily, and service tax, and this tax, and that tax, and the H tax, and the G tax, Z, Z, Z B, A, D, F, G, M, N, O, P tax. <laughs> hey, what would you pay? Um, ask, uh, ask your friends that are vaguely aware of it, you know, and we're all supposed to be telling everyone, wake, wake, wake the fuck up, realize what's up, right? We're all... We're all working on that, right? 
we're trying to work it into our routine. You know, the grocery produce guy asks you, how's it going? You, <laughs> you, well, you know, considering the Fukushima fallout, you know, your neighbor asks you, how's it going? Well, considering, the, you know, we're into just like, uh, wow, did you see them? Them jets tell you act the other hockey players at the football game last day, you know, just uh, never mind how's the weather. <laughs> how's the purple rain? <laughs> how's the Fukushima fallout? We have to get this into our fucking culture and we got to get on this problem. And like I say, it's not just for the tremendous harm we can still salvage and, and save and prevent out of this disaster, which may in fact be your own life. In my case, mine. Uh, I think it's too late for me, but um, keep it from happening again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Because all you fucking must know by now, if you've been reading any of this crap I've been forwarding to you or creating or commenting on or whatever, this is not the first time. Neither was Chernobyl. There were all kinds of them. You know, look at Hanford. Washington State, just, you know, what, not 88 kilometers or, eight, or 83 miles by air, uh, south-southwest, that way. Maybe that That's two-thirds of all the radiation release, well, up until not counting Fukushima, which is heaviest in Cascadia, Washington, actually, you know, where the sea goes in. Two-thirds of all the uh, radiation post pre Fukushima disaster fallout was actually at the Hanford uh, Washington site which is, you know, right from from day one of uh, processing uranium and uh, making a bomb uranium and plutonium. That's that's where it started. Uh, this era. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> My poor earth's been through this before. <laughs> Remember, where's my ancestors? You get the picture. So, um, yeah, get back to me on the feedback because I'm trying to prototype this and, 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 and present it in such a way that people can take on this task with, with a will and a bit of equipment and, and, you know, maybe a few examples to follow without taking on unbearable liabilities. Um, And keep in mind, if if no evidence is taken, you don't, you can't recon, you, you're not gonna get compensation in any class action lawsuits somewhere down the line if somehow or another Japan miraculously saved lives of any value. I mean, if the land's all gone, well, that's no value. If people are all gone, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, you don't own people, but. You, I mean, the liability ultimately lies with the land where this disaster was generated. Just like if my gas station tanks um, that I hadn't even used since I bought the property, you know, they hadn't been used in, you know, two owners ago, 20 years ago, <laughs> leaked the gas into my neighbor's property. That, that gasoline and oil and diesel fluid, that's, that's, that liability is, that rests with the land, the title. And the title holder, right? So it's it's no different. That's and of course they in turn have liability to hold against the designers of the system and everyone along the way, the international regulatory uh, atomic energy, uh, the UN thing, as well as the equivalent in Japan and the equivalent in like whoever sold them the American equivalent and the the Canadian equivalent of that nuclear watch agency that certified all this shit going out to the plant, everyone is fucking liable. Including the queen where this shit was dug out of the ground and shipped off, to, you know, from Saskatchewan to, uh, to the reactors in TEPCO, or wherever any of that came, all that liability is held all the way along the road. You don't, you don't sign off on that. You dug it out of the, out of the ground, you are, you are liable. Under all levels of law and by you and it, anyone attached and ultimately the ground it came out of. So if it's crown land, provincial land, 
Joe Schmansky that had the mineral claim, you're all you're all liable. You who had nothing to do with it, but yet it landed on your head because, you, <laughs> and now you got cancer, or you know, ten percent of your family does, or twenty. Okay, uh, and, and keep in mind, okay, you know, we know so very little. Like all the the hell high altitude in the BC is is where it's going to be, and that comes down. So uh, nobody's got an accurate even wild fucking guess as to where we're at other than in deep shit and it has to be found you know all along it should have been uh you know planes up there checking it in after our satellites detected incoming and uh warnings going out over radio and internet and every other fucking emergency message method uh you know go inside and stay inside for two hours until this rain passes or whatever you know and, and we watered down, wetted our, our, our vegetables before that kind of shit came. And it's uh, mitigation, you know. And if you think it's just, you know, maybe one or ten thousand people in BC are gonna die from this shit, think again. <laughs> think again. Hasn't been that that clean since probably about 1945 in BC. <laughs> of of man introduced, homo sapien introduced uh, radioactive nuclides, you know, primarily, uh, but not limited to uranium and plutonium, and now with reactors you get all kinds of extra shit in abundance. Well, this is a long one. <sighs> I'll try and split it up. I will be most grateful for anyone who goes to the extent of thinking about that and ask would they do something like that if it was available and you know they could afford to hire somebody to come in and do that and they would know uh, and ask other people and kind of you know, maybe make separate into categories of those who are totally uh, naive and those who are quite aware of the uh, radioactive poisoning, the genocide that's increased in bounds over this Fukushima thing, but is actually a, a problem from the 40s. Earlier, actually, you wouldn't believe what they were doing in the in the re early 20th century with radionucleotides. Not uh, accelerating criticality in them, but just in their natural state. Selling shoes. Oh, well, x-ray, here's at the shoe store. Stick your fucking foot in here. Get it x-rayed, and then we can custom fit your shoe, which, you know, look like a novelty, and you can see your foot. And Yeah, I, I'm telling you, they, they had a bunch of these fucking things out there, like hundreds of them, thousands of them, <laughs> for, for a while. Until so, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, you're not gonna these people's feet to fucking sell them shoes? <laughs> Here, just have some radium. It's good for you. Was once believed. <laughs> this is that 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 children. Okay, let's grow up together. We can all be children sometimes, but we all also have to be adults sometimes. There better always be somebody, some an adult, to always we're in shit. Okay. I ask you, thank you.